Thank you. If you can remain standing in honor of the men and women that have served our country and the men and women that continue to serve our country both home and abroad. Thank you. Clerk will call the roll. Councilor Anderson, yeah. Bucci, yeah. Christensen, yeah. Condon, yeah. DePietro, yeah. Fallon, yeah. Kinnan, yeah. Murphy, Nestor, yeah. Spadafora, Lucy. Yeah. Uh, before we start, if I could ask everyone to turn off their cell phones or put them on vibrate, and anyone that has a hat that uh, serves no religious pur pur purpose at all, please remove it. And uh, if we could start the meeting tonight for all you sur uh, channel surfers out there, very interesting, so keep in tune with us. We have uh, the mayor here today along with the chief of police, uh, Jim Holland, and the IT director, Anthony Rodriguez, to give the uh, update on technology that's now being used across the city. So, mayor. Please all rise for the mayor. I'll be uh, very brief, but be glad to answer any questions any of the councilors may have. As you know, we were down um, at the uh, latter part of the fall in 2010 uh, through December with a couple of uh, reports regarding our efforts to be able to get uh, a, a better uh, more effective crime fighting effort in uh, each and every one of the neighborhoods. Um, as we said we would uh, do over the winter time, we've had an effort to roll out an IT program that involves both uh, cameras in various areas of the city that eventually will be fed back and read directly within the police department, but are currently rolled out that Mr. Rodriguez will give you a demonstration on. Uh, together with some license plate readers that the police department has deployed on its own that the chief will also give you an update on. And uh, the chief, uh, uh, together with uh, some regional departments and some internal moves that have been made within our own department, has made a, a series of uh, changes that we think will help us build an effective effort for this coming summertime in particular, but uh, early spring here. Rolling into the summer, we expect that certain changes that he will relate to you will, uh, will help us get ahead of the curve, so to speak. And I think the best thing is to let the two of them uh, give you the information that we currently have. And uh, again, we ask that um, any questions that any of the councils may have be brought forward. Any ideas about improvements uh, and suggestions, we would obviously entertain. But um, you know, I'm very happy with the effort made by both departments and both of these individuals in particular to address many of the concerns that we talked to the council about uh, going back to November, December of, uh, of last year. So Mr. President, unless there are any questions of me directly, I would have Mr. Rodriguez come up first and give you a sense as to how some of this technology is being deployed. And then thereafter, have the chief come up and uh, give you his update as well. So. Great, thank you. Any questions? No. Any questions for the mayor? Thank you. See, see you then. Mr. Rodriguez. You could just Good tell us who you are, Anthony, just for the people out there. Anthony Rodriguez, Director of Information Technology for the City of Malden. Uh, I was going to give you a brief presentation of some of the technology that we've put out. We've had some great success, actually, moving forward with this. All right. Put this on the screen here for effect. This is one of the internal cameras that we're dealing with. This is a state-of-the-art access camera with a number of features. This can image a license plate from probably 100 and 150 yards away without a problem. It also has a number of features that are quite interesting in terms of auto tracking and intelligence. Anthony. <laughs> As 
as the camera moves, it's robotic. It, it's, it's scanning the actual frame in real time. It will monitor my movements and keep close, close, close watch on me. These cameras are particularly useful in uh, larger park areas. They're very sensitive, and these can all be individually programmed as, as we move them around the city at will. Uh, for some of the live feeds that we have, this is in real time in the front of the building. I can assure you people are moving. Let's see. Well, it wouldn't be a demo without a crash. Let me take care of something real quick here. I've lost connection with my server, it would appear. We're utilizing a wireless connection within the hall here, so that is causing the issue. Apologize for the brief technical difficulty. Uh, this is a live feed from out in front of City Hall. These are now streaming in real time. This is the feed from on top of Salem Street. We've deployed them on a number of locations citywide. <coughs> Anywhere that you click inside of the frame, obviously the camera will move, as well as if I want to zoom in on that particular vehicle there. I can easily zoom in on the plate for identification purposes. At this level, they will also auto-track, but it wouldn't be really practical to do that given the, all the movement in the frame. Uh, we have a number of them deployed. They're, everyone is going on top of a school at, at presently. We have uh, the wireless versions that are now being deployed. We can move those around at will. Uh, one of the downsides of having technology that th that this is that's this advanced, unfortunately, is the glitches that you see, and um, we are working through some of them with the existing server that we have. There's a number of um, capabilities that we need to expand on the existing server. We hope we're addressing those right now, and once we get those out of the way and we iron out some of the the the, uh, the bugs. This is going to be a very very impressive system that will be able to be monitored anywhere in the city, as well as from iPads appropriately configured, of course. I can actually stream in real time. Where is that? Yeah, 
So this is the actual secondary feed in real time on a, mo on a mobile device that can be used by law enforcement out in the field. Um, hopefully these tools will expand on the existing arsenal that we have and um, we're going to be putting them in spe specifically in high traffic areas like the T station. We have a, a very large number of people that are coming in and out of those corridors. We're focusing in on corridors, high traffic uh, corridors around the schools. And uh, we're working with police, so some of the locations we're kind of, you know, not putting out there um, in the public, but. Can you show the sure. Is the T station. We also uh, can program the cameras so that they, they will automatically patrol automatically uh, themselves. And again, we have the ability to come in and zoom at a very, very high rate. This is a 32x optical zoom on this camera, so you can imagine the imagery that's, that's possible once we move out. in here. <coughs> it's a very, very impressive camera. These are the same cameras that are deployed in Washington, D.C. They're used in a number of um, cities across the country, specifically uh, dealing with anti-terrorism. Anti these are, you will be hard pressed to find better cameras than the ones that we are using. The other goal is to also peel back into the system existing cameras that are in the schools. Uh, there's a number of cameras that are deployed in uh, areas of Maplewood. We'd like to consolidate them all so that they're kind of a unified system where we can monitor at will. Um, but again, planning for some of that capacity in the in the huge amounts of data that we're that we're transmitting over these networks, uh, it takes a little bit of planning. So I'd, we're working with software developers, camera manufacturers, uh, to really kind of tune the system so that we can scale it, and that'll be reliable and stable moving forward. But let's see right here, if we can go just zoom in on this camera right here. This kind of ability is, is invaluable when you're trying to identify situations that have happened. Um, Chief Holland can speak far better than I about this subject, but we're making great progress, and I'm uh, fairly optimistic that we'll have all the cameras deployed. The setup that I have here, even though I'm doing this for the um, benefit of the city council and the people watching TV, if there are city councilors that would like me to come to um, local events that they're having within their wards, be more than happy to go there and respond to any questions that uh, your constituents have about the system. And um, give them a little show and tell if they missed this on TV. And hopefully we won't have any problems. <laughs> I, I can uh, answer any questions if you have any. The Chief. Council Kennan. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, and thank you, Anthony. On. Um, <coughs> This unit you have here, there's a similar, as I was driving down the street the other night, I was happy to notice the one on top of the Salemwood School. Is it the same type of tripod system that's out there? Yes. On there? Uh, one of the things we're being very careful about is uh, when we're deploying these, we're using uh, non-penetrating roof mounts. It's a, uh, a sled, if you will, with a pole that we mount the camera on, and it has a recycled rubber mat so we don't do any damage to any of the uh, school structures. It's yeah. very non-invasive. Um, layout. We've all, when we deployed the wireless network initially, we've we made sure that we put lightning arresters and um, bulkhead uh, transitions. So all the wiring is pre-existing pre in the school. So deploying them has been fairly straightforward. 
So, so that, that was my next question. What is, uh, what is a typical setup time in the locations you go to? Because you, you got to bring the wiring t to this, but when, once the wiring's there, it's just a hookup, right? It takes, um, you know, I've been having to go around with some of our installation crews and get them familiar with the layouts of the schools, um, coordinating with the internal um, custodial staff to make sure that, you know, checking in with the people, making sure that we are identifying ourselves. And it takes probably about between two to three days okay. once we start getting things rolling. If we have the, a, a full crew out there, we can probably deploy one in less than a day. And and some of the wires to the existing telephone yeah. closet tends to be And how, how many total units have we purchased so far? We've purchased of various types around 24, I believe. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Council Kinnan. Uh, Council Bucci. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, first of all, I want to thank Anthony. Um, he actually did spend some time at the Ward 8 monthly meeting, and this was our key topic, and I think folks uh, were really very impressed with the presentation as well as the demonstration. Um, I'm just curious, uh, how long is the data actually stored for? Da the data storage is only limited to the amount of hardware storage that we have. Mm -hmm. uh, currently, for my calculations, depending upon the level of um, resolution that the cameras are streaming at, mm -hmm. we probably do about 20 days, and that, and, and then it would re-loop itself and write over the the, the oldest record. Mm -hmm. So we keep a kind of a rolling record of the uh, t in the digital video recorder. Okay, good to setup. hear. Um, in terms of the, I know you spoke earlier about where these units may be in place or not to speak about where they may be in place, but um, the, of the 24 units that have been acquired by the city, do you anticipate another acquisition is necessary or are I, I 24 think, units enough to handle what I we're think, looking um, to do? I think with what we have right now, it's a good start. Mm -hmm. It's a good system to, to kick the tires on. As we deploy more of the fiber optic backbone, mm -hmm. right now this is all streaming over a WiMAX network that covers the entire city. So this is a total wireless type of situation. It has its limitations. The fiber really kind of opens things up for us. Uh, as, as we transition the schools over to the fiber, um, as we transition other city buildings over, then your capacity goes up and then you can really support way more cameras as time goes forward. But in, in the, the ability to, that these cam a majority of these cameras are not fixed assets means that, that you can move them. Mm -hmm. So as, as things come up and you can move them to a hot, uh, a hot spot that's happening, that adds in the flexibility. So you may be able to do more with less. Mm -hmm. um, and, and again, Anthony, I'm a huge fan. And I you know, certainly think the more the better. <coughs> I think folks have a sense of um, security, not necessarily feeling their rights are infringed upon. Um, and I, again, I certainly appreciate you taking the time to come down to Linden um, to you know, obviously answer those questions. And we may actually bring you I you know, welcome you to come back. That was, a, that was a great meeting, actually. And, and, and one of the things that kind of came up out of that was some of these locations <coughs> will require multiple cameras. Mm -hmm. um, we've thought, we've, you know, as we're moving forward with a lot of the park renovations and, you know, covering those top lots, sometimes right. coming. Um, you know, the, the, you want to be able to keep a close eye that, you know, the graffiti, the tagging, the vandalism that happens. Mm -hmm. that, I think this will make a big dent in that. Okay. Um, and just from a point of, I, I may have missed it in part of what you were discussing earlier, but who ultimately is monitoring the whole system? Currently we're working with it downstairs because we're tweaking the system. Mm -hmm. I want to get it tuned. We can move it over to the police station at any time. All the streams are being recorded, so there's no loss of any of the data that's, being, uh, that's, that's currently being out there. Mm -hmm. um, once we move it over there, we already have all the hardware, the mounts in place. I think there's some issues of uh, who's going to actually walk, monitor in real time. Sure. Um, but to have it downstairs right now works because of the amount of kind of tweaking that needs to happen. I'd, I'd be running back and forth constantly. And I'm sure we'll hear a little bit more of that from the uh, police department because I, I too agree that, you know, I think if we can turn around response times and, and using the technology assist in that, I think folks will have a, it just continues to build their confidence.